Hello friends, good morning and greetings for the day. Today we are still continuing with the previous topic. Uh, we are still in the chapter 1 and we are looking at ISTQV foundation examination preparation. Uh, we are, uh, the, the topic at the test process was a little longer in the new syllabus so I had to break it into two equal uh, part uh, of the same and uh, we are going to continue with test process here uh, the next topic in the test process what is continued with the other test process so previous tutorial in case you have not been there uh, you can still go through there and then come to this tutorial because uh, the test process need to be understood that what are the different stages of uh, testing before we move to the new topic so the next topic here in the same uh, main topic that is test process is about the test work products now generally to define the test work product, it generally means any such uh, outcomes or document or any such piece of work which is created as a part of any particular stage by us is we call it as work product. So uh, when you talk about creating the uh, test data, test cases, uh, the test plan, uh, test matrices, any such thing what you create as a part of your entire process you call it as work product. So uh, we are going to understand more about like what are the different test work products available in the life cycle or what do we create as a part of the testing uh, process. So uh, in this way, uh, we are starting with the each uh, stage exactly. Like the first one is test planning work products. So in test plan, of course, the very thing is the first thing is the test plan itself, or the plan which is created, but it's not uh, mandatory that there'll be only one plan because a manager has all the right to modify it depending on the real-time situations or coming with any kind of surprises in between and the people just move out of a uh, uh, project in between, maybe say like, you know, move, take some kind of leave or uh, maybe the resource may not be available, availability of the testable code or the environment. So based on the real statistics or real time execution, the plan can be modified. And as the modify, of course, uh, we have uh, to update the plan as well. So we may have one or more test plans to be applied uh, internally at that point of time. And even there are many other things like uh, you talk about entry criteria, exit criteria, and such things, uh, checklist and other things which can be used uh, throughout the testing. So that could be another work product of test planning phase. Similarly, for the next one, that is test monitoring and control work products. Uh, generally, we have a lot of test reports being generated through the ongoing activity that what is the progress happening, how you're measuring it, which can be done with help of uh, the matrices, so matrices could be another thing to help you to generate the test report or uh, generally we call it as like test summary report as well. So uh, these uh, reports would be the another thing uh, which would be added as a part of work product on the monitoring side including the control actions list. So the control action would be the list of uh, all the necessary or guiding actions which would be required at any point of time to curb the deviation between the expected and the actual plan. So that's a few things to be taken care of from here. From test analysis work product, uh, generally uh, the test analysis like you start analyzing the requirements and you uh, break them into simple pieces like you know identifying the test conditions, uh, also start building up the environment uh, that is designing the environment or determining the environment. Also following that you start listing the templates like uh, testability matrices that how the uh, traceability would be done between these taste bases and the test conditions what you are identifying. So that could be another one as added to the list of the work products when, as we move to test analysis. Especially in terms of exploratory testing, the test charter will be created at this point of time because uh, we determine that which requirement, which particular document you will be going with uh, exploratory, the experience-based techniques. So we have something called as a test charter to be used as a part of exploratory testing, which will be defined as a part of this and can be included as one of the work product of test analysis. A test design work product, generally when you talk about test design, the major work product is the test cases. The test cases, what you prepare, maybe it can be logical or uh, concrete level test cases. Also, if you determine the use cases, uh, you, it will be a part of this phase where you uh, design those things and take care of it. Generally, use case is a test basis, but uh, if in case uh, you are preparing internally at this stage, these are also one of the work product. So not only limited to test cases, the test data to support those test cases, the environment preparation, infrastructure of the tools, automation testing, everything will be taken care of as one of the other work product here. 
as we come to the implementation generally implementation is all about getting prepared for execution and as a part of it you do a lot of other activities like you uh, prepare the execution schedule you prepare the test procedure required for execution uh, the test suites out of test cases while you prioritize the test cases as well so all these things will be considered as one the on one of the other uh, work products of implementation even like evaluating the traceability matrices or evaluation of the environment being ready or not and automation test script finalizing here so you call these things as your work products of the implementation so generally it's all about to know that how how executions may happen internally uh, about the documentation execution work product of course uh, as you execute you have execution logs you have uh, many other things to be created like the test status uh, defect reports uh, defect logs so everything could be included as a part of the work product for the execution and moreover in case you add more test cases during the run time to the uh, process because uh, maybe uh, at the time of execution you feel that uh, the written test cases may not be enough to fulfill all the coverage so you add some more test cases so as you add you can include that as well as a part of the uh, work product here so moreover we also have like test items uh, documentation of test items test tools test wares if you documented like what we have been using so far what more is required to be added so you document everything that okay we planned for these things but during run time we added these things so this document can also be included as a part of the test work product at the end of this test completion work product so generally test completion work product include the overall retrospective inputs so during retrospective we document the acceptance of the system we gather lessons learned throughout the testing process or is there any change request for the defects which remain open anything which is not fixed during the test life cycle say like the deferred defects we document it we archive the entire story so archiving could be another way of defining the test where details so generally we call it as uh, the retrospective so during that whatever documents you have collected could be another set of uh, work products which will be developed as a part of test completion even like you know evaluating the exit criteria if the exit criteria was modified compared to the test plan what you prepared then it will be included in this uh, work product of the test completion as well so entire thing you know all all other thing whatever you have could be included as a part of it and you you just take care of the same thing one last topic from this same chapter is to uh, make sure that uh, the traceability is possible between various test bases and the different test products so test work products so generally uh, why we say that because it is really important to have the ch changes to be traced and uh, at the same time to make sure that one or the other way we are covering the requirement so that we don't get surprised at the end of the uh, execution so traceability between the basis and the work product is really important that helps you that how much coverage you have achieved what is residual is there any el anything else to be tested because if you miss that then it becomes really a challenge because at the end of the release you may not be having enough time to add additional value to your testing so from the since the beginning you take care of tracing everything and then make sure that everything is one or the other way covered in your testing process so we have some of the inputs here from the benefits of uh, good traceability that is analyzing the impact of changes making testing auditable meeting it governance criteria improving the understandability of the test progress report relating the technical aspects of testing to other stakeholders and providing information to assess the quality of the product that how much so have so far it has been covered and so on so anyways team uh, this is finally the completion of the test process because uh, we had a lot of topics so we have broken into two parts so do not forget to visit the other part of it that will tell you the, about the entire test process that what are the activities of it now this uh, tutorial is about the various work products and the traceability between them as a part of uh, the test process itself so stay tuned for upcoming tutorials in the series where we'll be moving to another topic in this chapter and then we have five more chapters to go ahead till then stay tuned keep learning keep exploring and if you have any queries feel free to comment it below so thanks for watching team take care happy learning